Hey everyone, Techni here, and what we have here today is the Corsair Glaive in the Corsair M65 Pro. And this isn't really like a, you know, a versus, you know, but more or less an or, I guess. You know, would you go with the Corsair Glaive or the M65 Pro? I think they're both fantastic mice, and um, they both have their pros and cons. So, um, anyways, let's get into it. Alright, so let's go ahead and start it off with the M65 Pro. <music> All right, now, real quick, before we get into this, just want to let you know that they did just come out with a new M65. I believe it's called the M65 Elite, and there's a couple of changes, and we'll talk about those as we go. So, all right, so what we have here is the M65 Pro. As you can see, we have lights coming from the bottom, which show up top here, and then on our DPI select button, and then up front by our scroll wheel. Now, as far as buttons, you have your scroll wheel, and it's an actual button you can press down to, your DPI selector, which is those right there, you have your two side buttons and then the sniper button. And that's a little red guy right here. Now the sniper button, what it's going to do is like when you're in a heated moment, you can press it and it'll just slow your DPI down to whatever you choose. You can customize your DPI. If you want to make it, uh, you know, nothing, you want to make it match your regular DPI, you can do that. If you want to drop it completely low, you can do that as well. So I'm going to give you a quick example of the sniper button here. So we're gonna be scrolling back and forth, same speed right here. This is without the sniper button, and now I'm gonna press it. There's sniper button. There's without, and sniper button pressed. All right, now what I'd like to show you here real quick is the Corsair IQ software, and this is where you're gonna adjust your DPI or your RGB. And the real cool thing about the software is you have any other light up uh, Corsair products, whether it be your keyboard, um, your AIOs, your fans, anything, right? It'll all come up right here. So it's real cool and simple to use. Everything's just localized in one nice area. So it's really awesome in my opinion. So anyways, let's click on our M65 mouse right here. This will give our options from actions, light and effect, DPI, performance, and surface calibration. It's going to show your current setup right there of your lightings. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go into lighting effects here. As you can see, you got front zone and logo zone. I know this is hard to see on the camera, so that's what I'm just going to talk about it here. So front zone is going to be up here by your scroll wheel. And then the um, scroll wheel. It's a little twister. And then um, right under here where you had those little vents where I showed you before that come through. And then you have logo zone back here with our logo. And then those vents in the back with that light we talked about back there. Now you can click on it and turn them all off if you don't want any lights going, right? Then you can come down here and you have um, different effects. So you got rainbow, pulse, and shift. And then you have all these other options, which is lighting link, which will link all your Corsair stuff together, which is really, really cool. So, and then, of course, you can change your color to whatever you want over here. All right, so that's lighting effects. Now you have your DPI. And you have one, so you got default. So one, two, three, four, five. Five different DPI settings. And then you have your sniper um, DPI. My sniper set at 100, my regular default DPI is 500. And you can change your DPI button per the, the color. So let's turn that one on. See, and you can change the color of each DPI. So that's really cool. So when you're changing your DPI with these buttons right here, you can change it. When you, when you click it, it'll go to a color so you know which one you're using, which I really like that. I never change my DPI. I leave it on default all the time, and I honestly disable the other stuff so I don't accidentally change it. But if you do change them, it's super cool that you can change it just to the color. Instead of some mice, they just go from, you know, slot one, two, three, four, so on and so forth, right? So you just actually change your color, and that little dot right there will change colors. Really cool, I think. Now, here's one thing, and I've, I've tested multiple situations and calibrations and whatever trying to get this to work but with this mouse here I got my my DPI right there and right now I'm on 500 but say just for example say I want to go to 625 right and let me activate this one so I can go down to it so 625 I want to keep the default on I'm gonna to go to the next one it's gonna to go to 600 right so let's try this again I'm gonna to go to 650 and it's going to go right up to 700. So it like it like rounds up or down whether it's going to be lower. You know, you don't have the you don't have the halves or the quarters or anything like that. It's either going to be, you know, that flat whether it be the hundreds right there, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever whatever you choose, you know. Which 
I don't, I don't think that's a big deal. Like, is 550 going to make a big difference from 500? I don't know. You know, I, I pretty much keep mine on 500 across the board. But like I said, you're missing that option to be able to do that. It just goes straight to the hundreds. All right, so now let's get back to the mouse. What I want to show you here is the underneath. As you can see, you have the uh, three screws right here. Now, what I wish this they came with, I wish they came with something to kind of help you, you know, like, I don't know, a little notch or a little tool to get these guys out because they are not that easy. You know, you break one of these beautiful nails here, you know? So anyways, <clears throat> what you have is these three screws, which are the weight adjustments. As you can see, we just took out that little screw right here. And then what also you have is these little weights, if you can see this little guy, right? So, and what you can do is you can put that in there and then put your screw in there. And you have three. It comes with three, three of those. So you can, it's pretty nice. You can adjust the weight if you want. The whole bottom, like the frame, the whole frame of it is aluminum, which is really, really nice. Like all the way up to here and underneath down by those little cuts down there. It is all aluminum, which is really nice. I mean, it feels super quality build, nice weight to it and everything. It's very, very balanced. I was gonna close out the M65 Pro with a couple of my uh, thoughts on it. Number one, like when I first bought this mouse, I thought this uh, sniper button right here was gonna really get in the way. I was like, man, if I'm getting in a, in a heated moment in a game, I think I'm gonna start pressing that and kind of getting in my way. So what I did at first, I adjusted DPI to match my regular DPI, right? But then I got to notice after I started playing and whatnot, I really, my, my finger rests more up here towards the front. So it really didn't bother me. Now that's where the Elite comes in, the new one that just came out. They moved this button up to here. And they also moved these buttons up just a squeeze and they made them bigger, right? Your little side buttons, which I think making the side buttons bigger is a really big plus because honestly, they're pretty dang small here. And I end up tapping both of them instead of just one right there. So I really don't like how small those buttons are. Again, it could just be that I got a chunky thumb, but um, you know, I, I wish those were bigger and they did that in the Elite, but now on the Elite also they moved the sniper button up towards the front, which is, you know, me getting a claw grip, that's right where I'm gonna grab right there. So that's one thing right there. The other thing that I'd say for me personally is the backside. As you can see right there, I mean, it looks super cool, right? Like a little sports car or something. But for me, like I said, I claw and I kind of rest my palm in the back down there. <clears throat> Now, my palm feels how it doesn't come completely back here. I feel it kind of resting on that little uh, crevice right there. So it's not a nice just palm rest right there. It's just, it's falling off here. My palm's sitting here, and then it's just kind of pressing against that little drop off right there, which is kind of uncomfortable to me, which is why I don't use this mouse as my primary mouse for gaming. Now, let me tell you where this mouse really comes into play. If you're doing music, editing music, pictures, or or for me, where I use it a lot is editing my YouTube videos, and I love it. Because say you're just trying to get down there and get that nice little uh, close edit right there, or crop, or whatever it may be, I honestly use that sniper button, drop my DPI, and I get it right there on that line, right where I want that edit to be, you know, instead of being like, ah, blah, blah, or having to zoom in super far on my clip right there, you know? So that sniper button, I mean, this guy is awesome for editing. All right, so now let's talk about our Corsair Glaive, if I'm saying that right. And this is everything that comes in the box. You get your bag, your three different thumb grips, and your mouse. <laughs> So let's start off with these three different thumb grips. I think this is a really big point on this mouse here. As you can see right here, we have that big gap right here. And then you got your thumb grip, which is just going to be a little magnetic right there. If you can see in the kit, there you go. And it's going to go right into that little notch right there. So super easy, and it's in. And as you can see, this one here, it kind of comes out a little bit right here on the front. And it's really nice. I mean, that's honestly a super nice fit. Like, it kind of gets your thumb out a little bit right here as you can see feels super nice then you can just snap it off it's super tight right there so <clears throat> and then here we have our thumb rest one which just reminds me a lot of the uh, what's that one I was using before the Logitech 502 I believe now I mean it's really really nice I don't I don't use this setting but it's super cozy like I said, you're, again, it reminds me of the Logitech 502, but I don't know if you can see it in here. It's a super big base, much bigger than the 502. And then if you can see it in the camera right there where it swoops up a little bit in the side, 
it kind of like locks your thumb right into them. It, it's bigger than my thumb, even though I got a big thumb, but I still got a lot of room to move in there. It doesn't move around a whole lot, but like I said, it, there's, there's some room left in there. But you also have that, like I said, that little lip right there, which kind of rests your thumb right into it. But um, really comfortable. And you also, on the bigger one, if you can see, there you go, you also have another pad um, on the uh, side of the bigger one to make your movement smooth. Really nice. And then <clears throat> you have, this is pretty much just your basic one, which you'll snap in here, and it just fits smooth right in there. And it kind of feels just kind of like just a nice regular mouse, you know, which honestly, this is the one. I started using this one that pushed my thumb out a bit. <clears throat> and I said, heck, let me just test out some other ones and try them out. And now this one is honestly my go-to. I mean, it is just such a perfect fit. But this again, this is going to be completely different with everybody's hand. But for me, this one is just... I mean, super, just really cozy. So second thing you might be looking at on this mouse is like these buttons right here. You're like, man, look at that. You get your thumb rest right there. And then you have these big macho buttons with that gap right there. Like that's not going to work with my gaming, right? I'm going to have to go over there. They're going to have to bring my thumb all the way up here to press these buttons. You know what I mean? And I, I was honestly kind of worried about that. But it's really not because like, I can be playing and my thumb rests right here and then you can really decipher which button is which, which a lot of mouses, they just kind of roll in each other and there's a little tiny gap in between. You can really decipher which button is which, which I really love. I never accidentally hit the other one, like never. I mean, it's really, really nice. All right, let's go ahead and talk the body on the glaive here. As you can see, you have your sliding pads on the bottom there and the only aluminum part is this silver bit that you can see that's going right there. That's the only aluminum bit. You have your RGB up here in the front. Some cool little, uh, I don't like grill looking uh, RGB right there. You have your edge RGB right there. And then your logo. Now your DPI selector, as you can see the blue button here and you have one, two, three, four, five, which would be changed by this middle button here. Those colors can't be changed. It just goes blue to blue to blue. I've read a whole bunch of reviews on this Glaive before I got it. And a lot of the reviews, everyone was saying it's gigantic. It's super big. It's super heavy. This, that, and the other, right? And I don't know. I think I have average hands. And usually when I'm gaming, I get a, a claw grip on, right? So I'm gripping over here and I get my claw. And most mice would... Um, whether it be with the Logitech or the M65, they just kind of rest right here on the back of my palm. Now with this guy, it's super nice because it rests, it goes up towards like, I don't want to say the middle, but a quarter into my palm right there. And it's just super cozy because yeah, my hand up here is still raised, but I get to rest more of my palm right there so I don't get that back hand cramp. I mean, it is just wildly comfortable. Now again, if you put the different side things on, your thumb's going to come out of it. But when I had this on here, I mean, I cannot stress how cozy this guy is. So, and other people, like I said, the other reviews, people were saying that it was super heavy. Honestly, and again, I think this would be different for everybody, but to me, again, using the Logitech 502, and I, I forget, I was using the Logitech 4 or something, I forget what it was, and between the M65. This guy is, I'm not going to say it's super light, but it's light. It's lighter than the M65 with all of the weights out of it. So, all in all, the bads on the Glaive, um, maybe the DPI selector, which again, I only use one DPI because I don't ever want to accidentally hit that button in my game and just be whoosh, flying across the screen, you know? So, I leave it to one DPI, so I never have to worry about it. I wish I could change that little blue button to red, you know? But, eh, that, like I said, that's minor. Scroll wheel is super cozy right there. Um, what were we talking about? The bads. <laughs> Sorry, I like focusing on the goods so much. Anyways, um, the other thing I don't like is, and that's also on these other thumb changers, which I might use them more if they didn't have that. I hate this textured grip. Can you see it? There we are. I do not like that texture grip because when I'm in here gaming and I'm getting in a hot heated moment, right? And I just tend to, I don't know, get a little uh, over, over grip on there, right? So I'll end up start pressing and that really starts to hurt my fingers. I don't know if you can see it right there, but it just presses in right there. And I got little indentions, which I don't I don't like. I wish it was just straight up smooth like that right there. That's that's probably my biggest gripe about this is this texture that you can't change out. It's always there. I honestly really dislike that uh, texture, which is a little bit deep. So like I said, when you press on it, you really start to feel it. The other thing that's real kicker on this is the DPI on this guy. You can change it to whatever you want. If you want it to be like a 512 or 505, whatever it means, it'll it'll save it all. Unlike the M65, which I always found, like I said, it rounds 
higher or lower, whether it be a flat 100 or to 200, whether if you're in the 50s or whatnot. This guy you can set to whatever you want. Again, I keep mine at 500, so it doesn't really matter to me. But if you were wanted that precise number right there, the Glaive allows you to do that. Uh, so anyways, that's that's going to really wrap it up here on the Glaive and the M65 Pro. I think they're both fantastic mice. Um, you can find them for fairly cheap these days. I believe I got the Glaive for around $49 um, and the M65 Pro for around $29. Both purchased via Best Buy, but I believe all of them have the same price, Amazon and all that. But again, both fantastic mice. I highly recommend the Glaive for gaming. Like I honestly think you need to give this guy a shot and give it, give it some time. Uh, adjusting with the thumb grips and whatnot. In the M65, I can't stress how fantastic this is for editing with that sniper button. So I think I might have started a new uh, fashion trend here. I don't know, like a uh, mouse, mice necklace, you know what I mean? Yo man, nice mouse, what's your DPI? But anyways, thank you so very much for watching this one. Again, this wasn't a versus video or anything. This is an or, because I think both of these are great. So, um, but thank you so much for watching. I highly appreciate it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to catch some future videos. Anyway, thank you so much. Bye now.